In a dark and dystopian world, an unrelenting system pushes human nature to its very limits. Imagine a prison so twisted that survival is dictated not by strength or skill, but by the actions of strangers above you, strangers you may never see. The story dives into the dark, dystopian world of the whole, a nightmarish, vertical prison-like structure designed to bring out the worst in human nature. The whole is an immense, multi-leveled facility with hundreds of floors stacked one above the other, each containing two residents. Every day, a platform laden with food descends from the top, passing through each level for a set time before moving on. But there's a sinister twist. As the platform descends, residents on the top levels eat as much as they want, leaving only scraps or nothing at all for those below. By the time it reaches the lowest levels, the food is often entirely gone forcing people to starve or resort to extreme measures. Before entering the hole, each resident signed a contract and selected a single favorite meal they'd receive daily. This promise was a cruel illusion, designed to offer comfort before stripping it away. Each person is soon forced to confront the reality that their survival depends entirely on the actions of those above them. Any attempt to keep food once the platform leaves a level is punishable by death enforced by the unseen administrators who control the whole, making it clear that survival here will mean choosing between self-preservation and humanity. The story centers around two residents, Zatan and Perrin, who find themselves paired on level 24. Zatan is volatile, erratic, and fiercely attached to his promised daily pizza, the dish he chose when he signed his contract. He reveals his explosive nature right from the start, warning Perrin of his history of violence. He tells her how, in a fit of anger, he nearly set his parents' house on fire, and that if his promised pizza doesn't arrive each day, he might lose control. Zaytan's short fuse, impulsivity, and paranoid distrust of others make him a dangerous presence in the confined space of the whole. Perrin, on the other hand, is quiet and introspective, haunted by her own dark past. She entered the whole voluntarily, seeking a twisted form of redemption for a tragic incident in her life. Despite her own guilt, she is cautious and observant, watching Zatan carefully, trying to anticipate his outbursts. On their first day together, Zatan eagerly awaits the platform, practically salivating as he watches it descend. He's desperate for a taste of normalcy, his promised pizza, something that reminds him of a life outside. But when the platform finally reaches level 24, his hope shatters. His pizza has been picked at. A slice is missing, taken by someone on a higher level. The sight sends Zatan into a rage. Feeling betrayed and cheated, he impulsively grabs another dish that isn't his, determined to reclaim what he believes is rightfully his. His act of defiance does not go unnoticed. Voices from upper levels call down, scolding him and urging him to respect the rules. They explain that the whole operates on a system of solidarity. Each resident is expected to take only what they need, allowing the food to last down to the lowest levels. They call it the Solidarity Revolution, a desperate attempt to create unity and shared responsibility in a place designed to pit them against each other. But Zatan scoffs at their idealism. To him, the Solidarity Revolution is a weak attempt to cover up a system meant to strip people of autonomy. His only concern is his pizza and he feels no obligation to sacrifice his meal for strangers on the floors below. Just as Zatin raises a stolen chicken wing to his mouth, Perrin steps in. She warns him that breaking the rules will lead to chaos and suffering for those on lower levels who might go without food entirely. She tries to reason with him, offering some of her croquettes in an attempt to calm him down. Zatin accepts her offer for the moment, reluctantly agreeing to respect the rules for the day. But he warns her and anyone who might be listening that if his pizza is incomplete again tomorrow, he will do whatever it takes to get his food. Over the next few days, Zatan's tension and frustration continue to grow. Every morning, he waits anxiously for the platform, watching it with a mix of hope and anger. Perrin tries to keep him calm, gently explaining that solidarity is their best hope for ensuring that everyone can eat, even those at the very bottom. But Zatan's paranoia deepens, and he views the rules as a form of control, a way to strip away his autonomy. The very idea of rationing feels oppressive to him, and he begins to see the rules as chains placed upon him by the upper levels. One morning, when the platform arrives with yet another incomplete pizza, Zatan snaps. 
He erupts in anger, slamming his fists against the platform, claiming that the rules are designed to oppress them, reducing them to passive participants in their own suffering. His outburst attracts the attention of a Frenchman on an upper level, who attempts to reason with him. The Frenchman explains that the food rationing system gives everyone a chance to eat, creating a fragile sense of shared survival. He appeals to Zatin's empathy, urging him to think beyond his own hunger and consider the greater good, suggesting that they are all in this struggle together. But Zatin dismisses the Frenchman's words as nonsense, seeing the rules as nothing more than shackles. He argues that this so-called solidarity is merely a means of subjugation, designed by the powerful to keep everyone else subdued. In his eyes, the Frenchman is nothing more than a pawn who has accepted his chains. The conflict reaches a deadly climax when, during a particularly heated argument, a fire breaks out on their level. Flames suddenly engulf a nearby resident, and Perrin rushes to put out the fire, desperately trying to save the woman. Zatin, however, stands frozen, watching the flames with detached horror. The incident leaves him shaken, his sense of control slipping as he confronts the brutal reality of life in the hole. With time running out, they are forced to discard the remaining food to prevent freezing during the night. In the days that follow, Perrin meets a new cellmate, a one-armed woman who shares her own harrowing story. She explains that she once shared her food with someone who was starving on a lower level an act of kindness that led to severe punishment. The administration amputated her arm to set an example, showing that even small acts of compassion will not be tolerated. Her story is a stark reminder of the whole's cruelty, where empathy is viewed as a weakness to be eradicated. Meanwhile, Zatan's mental state continues to deteriorate. Flashbacks reveal a life filled with broken relationships, failed business ventures, and deep-seated feelings of rejection. He recalls the times he was let down, his parents who abandoned him, and his failed attempts to be independent. These memories feed his growing paranoia and resentment, and he becomes increasingly erratic, battling a persistent cough and the psychological toll of life in the hole. One night, he stands at the edge of the platform, lost in his thoughts, reflecting on the mistakes he's made. He tells Perrin that he regrets his choices and Ips asks her to find his children to tell them he loved them. In a final act of despair, Zatan sets himself on fire and leaps into the void, leaving Perrin alone to face her own struggles. As the platform descends each day, Perrin faces new and worsening challenges. Food becomes scarcer, and residents grow more desperate, fighting over even the smallest scraps. Perrin clings to memories of her life outside the hole, haunted by the tragedy that brought her here. She recalls her ex's young son, who died in an accident involving one of her sculptures. Blaming herself, she entered the hole seeking redemption through suffering, hoping to make peace with her guilt. One day, on one of the lowest levels, Perrin encounters a young child, weak and terrified. Despite her own hunger, she feels a surge of compassion. She gives the child her remaining food, recognizing that this act of kindness might be the only meaningful thing she has left to give. In a final act of hope, she places the child on the platform as it ascends, praying that he might escape the hole and find a life beyond its walls. Watching the platform ascend with the child, Perrin feels a bittersweet peace. In a place designed to strip away every ounce of humanity, her compassion is an act of rebellion, a way to hold on to the last fragment of goodness within her. As she reflects on her journey, she understands that survival here often requires the abandonment of empathy and morality. Yet her final act of kindness leaves a glimmer of hope, a chance for the child to escape, and perhaps one day, change the twisted system of the whole. The story leaves us with a haunting question. In a world where survival forces us to forsake our compassion, how far would you go to preserve your humanity? That's all for now. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment to let me know what you think. More to come. See you next time.